Amongst many other things, the original Great Western Railway, not to be confused with the modern-day train operating company of the same name, was known for their iconic 460 steam locomotives. These included the Castle, King and Manor classes, and although she wasn't built as a 460, I also want to mention the one-off 462 Pacific number 111 The Great Bear. And in the words of the Tim Traveller, but of course, we're not here to see any of that. Instead of the mighty 460s, I wanted to discuss one of the more unusual motive power offerings from the GWR. This is the steam rail motor, and I think it is specifically the Diagram R variant, brought to Train Simulator by Victory Works. The add-on was released way back in February 2014, and you can still buy it on Steam today, where it costs 24 New Zealand dollars at full price, although Dovetail had it on sale for only 11.99. No, not that 11.99. In their semi-recent spring sale. Disappointingly, the rail motor is only supplied in one livery, this being lined maroon with a white roof. Kerno Model Rail Centre recently released 00 scale models of the Diagram R rail motor, which don't just come in preservation era condition, but also a simplified chocolate and cream livery and KMRC also made the similar Diagram O rail motor in two liveries, lined brown and fully lined chocolate and cream. I haven't got one of those models because I think they're too expensive, and it's a shame that we've only got one livery for the vehicle and train simulator, and as much as I hate to say it, it is what it is. I haven't got much of an opinion on the sounds, apart from the whistle. It is a bizarre and non-looped sound. And what this means is that you'll always get the same short recording when you blast the whistle, instead of the whistle sound looping for however long you hold down the spacebar. As an example of a locomotive that does have a dynamic slash looped whistle, here is the Caledonian Railway 492 class 080 tank engine. One of the reasons why I like the rail motor is because each end of the vehicle is completely different from the other. At one end, you've got a vertical boiler on top of a power bogey. Meanwhile, at the other end, the cab is reminiscent of an auto coach. And indeed, the way in which these rail motors were operated was similar to the later auto trains, which typically consisted of a 4800 class 042 tank engine, later reclassified as 1400, pushing or pulling one or two auto coaches. Auto trains offered most of the same benefits as self contained rail motors, but had better operational flexibility due to the use of a separate locomotive. Besides the 1400, other types that could run with the auto coaches included the 517, 5400, and 6400 classes. But I can't show you the 517 here because it doesn't exist in Train Simulator. Incidentally, there was a second variant of the 1400 class, designated as the 5800 class. Twenty of these engines were built in 1933 but the only difference from the 1400 was the lack of auto train equipment. Unfortunately, none of the 5800s survived into preservation, but four examples of the 1400 class, out of the 75 originally built, did make it into preservation. And now we return to discussing the rail motor. As for how the system even worked, there are linkages and rotating shafts connecting the regulator to the unpowered cab. 
When he was at the, I'll call it, number two end, the driver could open and close the regulator as well as apply the brakes, but he couldn't release the brakes. As such, he had to use a bell code to communicate with the fireman, who had to stay at the number one end to maintain coal and water levels in the boiler, and to change the reverser settings for that matter. When you're setting up the rail motor in the scenario editor, you can change the number and destination boards to anything you want. The hashtag before the two digits number is there to determine whether or not passengers appear in the saloon behind the boiler. Put in the letter M for modern outfits, and the letter P for old fashioned outfits. As for the last 12 digits behind the number, these are for the destination boards, and you can type in any place name you like as long as it's 12 letters or less. Although it's not even slightly realistic, I ran this thing with destination boards reading New Plymouth, and that is a city in New Zealand, in case you didn't know. Although the model has dynamic numbering, I thought it was only meant to depict number 93 in her restored condition. This particular rail motor was built at Swindon Works in 1908, five years after the GWR introduced their first steam rail motor. Including number 93, there were 16 examples of the Diagram R variant, and this was the last batch of rail motors built by the GWR. The whole idea behind these vehicles was to provide cheap passenger services on suburban and branch line routes. They were also intended as competition with electric trams. Number 93 was originally allocated to South Hall Shed in West London. Throughout her original working life, she would spend time at other depots throughout the GWR network. These included Christ Newith, Chalford, Gloucester, Stourbridge and Taunton. After 26 years in service as a self-propelled vehicle, number 93's boiler was condemned at Swindon in November 1934. But instead of being scrapped, she was rebuilt as auto coach number 212, first appearing in the skies in May 1935, as an example of the Diagram A30 variant. 212 survived long enough to become British Railways property, and wasn't withdrawn from active service until 1956. BR still found a use for her, as a work-study coach in Birmingham. Sixteen years later, in 1970, the vehicle was sold to the Great Western Society and brought to the Didicot Railway Centre in Oxfordshire. Restoration took a very long time to complete, and it wasn't until 2011 when number 93 ran under her own power, the first time she had done so in 75 years. She remained in operational condition until 2021, when the boiler ticket expired. As far as I know, she is still in storage at the Didicot Railway Centre, awaiting another overhaul. There are some good features on the model in TS Classic. These include, but are not limited to, three driving modes, each of varying difficulty, animated rods when you change the reverser setting, opening cab doors in windows and roof hatches, a passenger view and animated steps for ground platform support, although I've never figured out how to get that last one to work, but the good thing is that there are details on how to do that in the manual. This thing is ideal for just pottering up and down a short branch line, but not much else as a result of her limited power output and fuel capacity. She could only hold around 2,045 litres of water and one metric tonne of coal. Besides the completed rail motor herself, this pack also includes a standalone and fully functional power bogey model. Needless to say, this thing looks incredibly weird without the coach body. 
This pack also includes five career mode scenarios for the West Somerset Railway. Now that I've got the Superior Train Sim World 4 version of the WSR, I generally avoid the ancient TS Classic version like the Plague. So instead, I prefer to run the rail motor on other routes. Incredibly, number 93 actually ran shuttles up and down the Lou Valley line back in November 2012. If you've got the Railways of Devon and Cornwall V11 route, available from Alan Thompson Sim, you can recreate the Liscarda to Lou shuttles with number 93. As one might expect, the rail motor is not very powerful, given that the design was essentially just a tiny 040 steam locomotive combined with a passenger coach. I've never really tried pulling any rolling stock with this thing, but I wouldn't want to chance it with any more than two coaches on anything other than straight and level track, let alone the steeply graded Falmouth branch or North Somerset Railway. Factory Works included an auto coach, specifically the Diagram A31 variant, with their GWR 1400 class add-on, released in October 2014. Although rail motor number 93 sometimes ran with a restored trailer coach in real life, the TS Classic version is not compatible with the aforementioned auto coach. I mean, sure, you can still couple the two vehicles together, but the controls don't work properly if you do. Besides the Lou Valley line that I mentioned earlier, other routes on which I like to run the steam rail motor include, but are not limited to, the Malmesbury branch, Prince's Risborough to Aylesbury, and Brixham to Churston lines. For reference, the Brixham to Churston line is not a standalone add-on. Instead, it's included as part of Dovetail's old Riviera line in the 50s route from 2015. As for the Prince's Risborough to Aylesbury line, that's included as part of the freeware Wickham Railway and Joint Line route, which you can download from Steam Sound Supreme. Of course, this is a Steam Era route, and although the Prince's Risborough to Aylesbury section is still open today, it looks very different now compared to how it was in the Steam Era. As I have done for other locomotives in previous reviews, I also did a trial run with the rail motor on the ancient test track route to see just how fast this thing could go. In the end, I couldn't get her to go any faster than 40.6 miles per hour. In the grand scheme of things, and despite the add-on's age, not to mention the vehicle's limited power and therefore usefulness, I still think the GWR steam rail motor is a good add-on. Consequently, I can still recommend her to anyone who's looking to drive a steam engine that's nothing like the more conventional offerings, although, on the subject of Victory Works products, I still recommend locomotives like the GT3 gas turbine, War Department Austerity 210, London Brighton and South Coast Railway Terriers, and Great Western Railway Small Prairies. In any case, you're welcome to leave your thoughts on the rail motor in the comments section.